Chrome Entertainment created a magnificent five member girl group back in the day by the name of Crayon Pop. Between the years of 2012 to 2017, Crayon Pop definitely made waves in the music scene before they suddenly stopped all activities. So, what happened to them? Well, let's talk about it. Before they were Crayon Pop, Ellen, Serang, Gumi, Soyul, and Choa were named Hurricane Pop. They ended up releasing a song called Bing Bing. However, Serang left the group shortly after the music video was shot in order to follow the career path of an actress. That's when Wei, Choa's twin sister, steps back into the picture, seeing as she was the one who recommended her sister to the group and was initially invited to join the group as well during that time. Wei was a part of another group at the time called In Dolphin and decided to finally leave that group so she could join Hurricane Pop. Now, Hurricane Pop didn't remain the group's name for long, though, because the CEO of their agency felt it might have been impervious to Japan's hurricane history. So that's when Crayon Pop was born. Now that we're all caught up on the backstory, let's look at how Crayon Pop debuted on July 17, 2012, with the mini album Crayon Pop's first mini album and single Saturday Night. <laughs> captured the disco feel very well i love the beat of this song it literally makes me want to dance it's you know it's just such a nice song the ladies are gathering everybody around so they can all shake and shimmy the night away it's a pretty decent dance track the video had that party vibe going on too i wasn't crazy about the outfits or the actual song itself but the dance was very interesting i liked it so the CEO confessed that this debut drained all the company's money, which was probably all the more upsetting considering it didn't chart that well. On October 12, 2012, Crayon Pop came back with the single Dancing Queen. Now this should have been their debut song. I really, really, really like this song. I wasn't crazy about the outfits here again. I feel like the pink track suit underpants threw it off for me. But I understood why they wore them because that ninja kick in the chorus was pretty high and fierce. I loved that. Speaking of the dance in general, like it's just really cool. Like I said, absolutely loved it. So the ladies are letting us in on their frustrations. It's a Friday night. Nobody has reached out to them to make any plans. They're lonely and upset and bored. So what do they do? Dance the night away, of course. Definitely check this song out in its entirety if you haven't already. It's very, very good. I just love 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 the song and the dance the single placed number 156 on the charts and it sold over 19.1k copies shortly after their last promotions the agency created a reality tv show for the ladies called crayon pop tv which showed us how the ladies were preparing for their next comeback and getting ready for the new year we get to see how they interact and joke around with each other we listen to them express their opinions and we watch as they take on new experiences and navigate their way through challenges it's kind of hard to find the episodes in order but if you manage to locate all of them i highly suggest you check out the show 
show if you want to get to know the ladies a little better. I believe there's even a season two to the show since the first one gained them many, many loyal fans. After successfully touring in Japan, on June 20th, 2013, the ladies came back with the single Bar Bar Bar. Probably their most successful and like most recognized song out of their entire catalog. This song was, it just like took me aback, you guys. Y'all, my eyes were glued to the screen the first time I saw this video. I have never seen a concept like this before, and I can understand why this song went viral it's so fun and energetic the ladies are jumping around all over the place the dance is crazy but super cool at the same time track suits and or school uniforms are the ladies preferred outfit choice which does set them apart from other girl groups i like the outfits here a lot better maybe because they were better color coordinated like i don't know colors colors mean a lot to me so the ladies are telling us to jump move around move your bodies join them in this dance frenzy they've made it clear that they don't want to sit around at home they'd rather be out jumping and having fun i really like the song and i don't know how i hadn't heard it before during the research for this video considering it was so popular but i'm really glad that i did now the single reached number three on the charts and it had over 1.1 million downloads Shortly after their mass success with their previous project, the public began critiquing Crayon Pop, thus causing controversy. The ladies were accused of supporting a right-wing website called Ilbe, I hope I said that right, because Wei had used the term Nomu Nomu on Twitter. The term was apparently used on the website to ridicule the president at the time. Chrome Entertainment stepped in to defend Wei by explaining that she had no clue about the website and was just expressing egyo. So then the people rushed to point out that the CEO was registered on the Ilbe website, which raised more concerns. So then he explained that he was only on the website to gain information on other artists and girl groups. The controversy led to some of the group's scheduled activities to be canceled and even a commercial featuring the ladies got pulled due to the growing complaints from the public. This controversy will resurface again around 2014 after Ellen was accused of using the Ilbe hand sign. However, the agency explained that each member has a letter in the alphabet that represents them and Ellen was just holding up hers which was of course the letter e after touring all over the world gaining more popularity and winning prominent awards crayon pop closed out 2013 with a bang come april 1st 2014 we will get a single comeback titled uh e <laughs> pop fashion the ladies are giving us dance pop trot goodness i didn't like this comeback as much as the previous one but it's still pretty good nonetheless this is another dance song where the ladies are inviting us to join them in the rhythm they're realizing that we have just one life to live and they make it clear to us that they intend on making the most of it. I love how the video opens up at this prestigious party where everyone is dressed elegantly and then in the middle of the room here is crayon pop in their bright track suits and wonky dance moves. They're so unapologetic, unapologetically them and I love that about them. The single placed number 10 on the charts and it sold over 5.7k copies. Much like 2013, the ladies closed out the year with many, many, many more world concerts. Even headlining for Lady Gaga, they raised awareness for a campaign that aimed at increasing motorcycle safety for children and they had tons of fan meet and greets. On March 27, 2015, Cram Pop came back with the mini album and title track FM. Y'all, 
up until this point of the video, I was convinced that I didn't know who Crayon Pop was. Haven't heard of them or anything. I swear when I was researching this video, like I was taken aback. Like when I got to this song, all the memories just came flooding back in. This was actually the first song I'd ever heard of Crayon Pops back in the day. I swear I thought I was just covering some random girl group that was requested, but this song made me so nostalgic when I was editing this video. I realized that I do know this group. Like, wow. So the concept was super cool to me back then because they looked like Power Rangers. I love, love, love the dance to this song and how they do their formation thing and then just take off. This was such a fun video to watch. The song is still a bop to this day. I can't believe I forgot who this girl group was. The song was written by Shin Sedong Tiger. He used a lot of big words and similes in this song. I'm not even going to pretend to act like I know what this song is about because the lyrics are very confusing confusing to me all i know is that it's super catchy and you should definitely go listen to it if you have not already the ep placed number six on the charts and it sold over 5.5k copies after more success with their japanese projects crayon pop released their first full-length album on september 26 2016 called evolution pop volume one with the title track being dudum chit <laughs> this comeback so 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 much the beat was so good and the d doom chip part just makes me want to dance the ladies ditched their track suits and gave us cuter outfits to sport in this comeback which i loved the track suits were their signature outfit of choice which fit them and made them stand out from other groups but it is nice to see them switch it up you know like most of their songs the ladies are inviting the audience to get up and dance even if it means people ridicule you you know just be yourself and have fun next to f them and Dancing Queen. This is one of my top favorite songs of Crayon Pops. The album placed number 10 on the charts and it sold over 3.3k copies. Not long after the promotions for their album, Soul Yield went on a hiatus due to an anxiety disorder she developed while preparing for the album. Then in November, So Yield announced that she was engaged to Moon Hee Joon and would officially tie the knot early the following year. The group continued to promote as a quartet. Eventually, So Yield departed from the group in 2017 to nurture her family she had given birth to a beautiful baby girl and was focusing on being a mother and a wife as for the rest of the ladies it gets tricky as to what really happened at least from what i could like research so again from what i can find crobe entertainment released a statement april 18 2017 stating that the ladies contracts were expiring and there hadn't been any talks of renewal at the time except for way who's contract couldn't expire until may of course since you know she kind of like joined the group after it had already been kind of formed then it came out later in may that the remaining ladies did in fact renew their contracts with chrome entertainment however the group was set to remain on hiatus while each member focused on their individual solo projects although gumi signed with climax entertainment in september of that year chrome entertainment reiterated that the group promotions for crayon pop will be handled through them while solo activities were to be managed by other companies that would have been nice if chrome entertainment had actually released more projects with crayon pop it seems like although there wasn't an official disbandment announcement that's exactly what ended up happening with crayon pop i checked around online to see if the ladies came out and spoke on the situation and i found an interesting interview that ellen did on africa tv in the spring of 2018 according to Sumpi. so ellen gives us insight on the group's earnings and how it was distributed by stating when we were promoting as crayon Crayon Pop, we didn't get as much as we had worked. The profit that the members brought in was split with 70% going to the company and 30% going to the members. We couldn't do anything about it since we had signed the contract with those conditions. Now that's interesting to me because I wonder if the 30% was split five ways or if they each got their own 30% proportion. 
So Ellen goes on to explain that the standard contract had earnings divided 50% between the company and, you know, the other party, like the artists, but it was normal for agencies to change how the earnings were split. She added that most idols start out with their contracts this way. Ellen goes on to state, I believe that the members should be paid as much as they work. If they don't, they get dispirited. Right now, the head of the agency changed, so the way the earnings are divided has changed as well. However, it wasn't, it hasn't been that long, and there are some people who haven't resigned with the agency. She further shared that if companies don't pay their artists properly, the artists end up moving agencies or retiring from in the entertainment industry altogether. When one viewer asked if the agency pays for their meals and security, Ellen answered by saying this, they never do. The money for meals and other costs come out of our own earnings. When another viewer pointed out that Cram Pop probably had a lot of money invested in them, she replied, during our Bar 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 promotions, they did didn't want to pay for more helmets so we only used one each hmm i even saw somewhere that they the company ended up making like millions of dollars off of the bar 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 promotion so they made a pretty penny off of the ladies during that time but they didn't really want to hash out any more money than they felt that they had to so this interview sheds a light on what was going on behind the scenes perhaps the ladies were fed up with how they were being treated in the company especially since the people in charge had shifted and then the way the money was being distributed shifted with that and you know that's probably why they just decided not to continue renewing their contracts perhaps cram pop isn't disbanded though maybe they're just working on themselves and still doing their own thing they could very well surprise us once these you know like any one of these days and they could come come back you know with a single or a project like who knows so i guess we just have to keep hope alive <laughs> so cram pop released two albums four eps and 12 singles they were nominated for 12 awards and they won 13 now that is all for Crayon Pop, folks. I didn't know them until, like I said, halfway through editing this video. So thank you so much for requesting this video, Alejandro Contreras. When I look at these women, I think back to the CEO's preference when he was picking the ladies for the lineup of the group. I remember reading that he had apparently rejected anyone who looked too sexy. He basically only wanted regular looking girls for this group and he did a good job at picking you know just regular plain looking girls watching their videos i didn't feel like any one member stood out amongst the rest you know in terms of like appearance they all kind of like matched each other's energy you know how in some groups there's just that like one super ultra pretty girl who everybody just focuses on because she's just so gorgeous yeah i didn't get that vibe with this group at all which was kind of refreshing and that's not to say that they're all basic looking that's not what i'm saying i think they're all beautiful it's just an observational opinion so let me know your thoughts on crayon pop who was your favorite what song stood out the most to you also i love reading you guys' comments so thanks for taking the time to do so i have tons of videos lined up but i love when you guys request videos so keep them coming until the next one i'll see you all around Masalam.